Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the site of the bloodiest battle of the Civil War, has many stories to tell. That's what's so special about it. Each time you're there, you learn something new. You see a new site, tour a new building, hear a new name. And with each of those names comes a new story. One story, one that I never heard about in history class or on a battlefield bus tour, stands out to me the most. And it all came from hearing a name. Elizabeth Thorne. Elizabeth Masser immigrated to Pennsylvania from Germany at just 21 years old. In Gettysburg, she met Peter Thorne, who soon became her husband. Together, they moved to Cemetery Hill, where Peter had accepted the job as caretaker of the Evergreen Cemetery. Eventually, Elizabeth would be left to take over Peter's duties as he joined the Union Army. At the time, Evergreen only facilitated about five burials a month. At the end of June 1863, soldiers moved into Gettysburg. In preparation for battle, Union generals Howard, Sickles, and Slocum made a stop at the famous Evergreen Cemetery Gatehouse. Elizabeth served them dinner with what little food hadn't been taken by the Confederates and offered her knowledge of the local roadways. When the battle began, Elizabeth and her family hid in the cellar, but were soon ordered to leave town altogether. When she returned to Gettysburg on July 2nd, 1863, she found a town at war. Her 19 horses were killed, her farm was damaged and ransacked, and the place she'd come to call home was surrounded by death. David McConaughey, the president of Evergreen Cemetery, approached her with orders to dig graves for the soldiers who, until then, had laid rotting on the battlefield. So, she began digging. Volunteers offered their assistance, but soon quit due to the smell and July heat. With no one but her elderly father to assist her, and nothing but her desire to guide the dead in achieving rest, Elizabeth buried 91 soldiers, 66 of which remain buried at Evergreen today. All the while, she was six months pregnant. She gradually developed um, heroin status, um, and then it sort of drifted back. And then when my father took over the cemetery, he made it clear that one of his goals was to tell her story. So as time and the civilian experience at Gettysburg has had more focus on it, I think Elizabeth's uh, long-lasting effect on Evergreen's history is her strength, her resolve to get through those days, to get through those years, the three years of running the cemetery. I think because of the Civil War Women's Memorial that was erected in 2002, she has come to be the person and the woman who represents all the women. Today, Evergreen is a place of peace and beauty. And I can't help but feel that this is because of Elizabeth and her devotion. She created a space to come and learn about the stories that too often go untold, many of which highlight the experience of women during and after the battle. For example, Jenny Wade, the only civilian killed at Gettysburg, who was shot while cooking bread in her home for Union soldiers, has found her final resting place at Evergreen. All of this and more has earned Elizabeth Thorne the name Angel of Gettysburg.